ओम शांति गुड मॉर्निंग सो टू शेयर अ फ्यू थॉट्स ऑन द टॉपिक टुडे इट्स द कॉल ऑफ लव वी हैव ऑफन हर्ड ऑफ द कॉल ऑफ टाइम बट एक्चुअली द कॉल ऑफ टाइम मींस आल्सो द कॉल ऑफ लव यू नो येस्टरडे व्हेन डैडी गोसा शेयर्ड she mentioned one thing that when you call baba from your heart baba becomes present and baba has had said just do this and he said i'm already doing it whenever you have the thought i will be present but can i feel that can i in a way touch it with my mind touch it with my feelings is a translation i don't know must be you know translation who's listening who can hear there's quite a few yes must be certain languages yes okay i think it's okay now yes so this whole experience of the aviet is something that from what actually happened now that's probably the deep secret in the drama is to take this extra high jump and to really start to experiment with the aviet with the subtle and when i'm able to really use my thoughts my deep inner thoughts when i'm able to really experience and feel that i will feel the closeness of baba i will feel that companionship because god is subtle he's just a point of light brahma baba now also he is very subtle and it's only when i become very subtle that i'm able to connect and through that connection of subtlety able to do the subtle service what is subtle service subtle service is that energy that reaches souls that uplifts them and it is a service that leaves a permanent mark on them because it's experiential with words or knowledge again knowledge is extremely necessary and helpful but with knowledge people may be impressed but it is with the subtle power of the soul of the mind of the feelings that then souls are able to be inspired souls are able to get something of experience because after all when we speak of love or peace it's not an explanation that is going to give me the ex- to give me the upliftment it's the experience so it's a very good time now to really uh practice this aviat stage and what does it all come back to it comes back to one thing to experience the original being the supreme soul because it's in that original being by the end of the kalpa that every everything original is left original love original peace original knowledge original purity i mean brahma baba he recognized and he surrendered fully no ifs and no buts and no later hmm? ifs buts and later <laughs> there were not these barriers and what is it that you feel what is it that he must have felt when he surrendered i have found my world after many many lives of searching for something original something genuine he certainly found it and finding it he gave all of himself to that 
Because one of the other words that we hear is the word transformation. And what is it that transforms? Basically, it's consciousness, the way we think, the way we feel, and of course, when it is expressed through words and through behavior, that is also transformed. But what transforms us? Is it will? Is it determination? Is it courage? Is it time? It takes time to transform, doesn't it? But Baba is saying, go more quickly. <laughs> so what speeds up transformation? It is really, it is the power, well many things, knowledge certainly helps a great deal. Knowledge gives the compass. But actually it is the experience of original love, remembrance. When the soul has that experience of original love and is able to maintain it and sustain it, when the soul is able to remain in that link, in that position, then the energy, the flow of that original love automatically purifies, heals and liberates. Because a lot of us don't really want to struggle. Most of us do not want to suppress. We want actually tra to transform. But permanent transformation, you know, sometimes there's transformation that happens on Tuesday and by Friday, some of the things are back. <laughs> so, and this is how I can lose my self-respect because it seems that things come back sometimes. But the key to permanent transformation is this very, very constant link with original love. That is the, the, the constant link with Baba. And because the more there is that link, then the less effort and process I have to go through. Yes, there will be an effort, but the effort will be more an effort of inner attention. The link with original love with the Father, one special thing comes out from that. What does love create? One of the most important things that love creates. Yes, it's a bit difficult to hear from here actually. <laughs> but one of the things that real love creates is trust. When a, and faith. Yeah? When a person has trust, automatically they become more confident. They become more patient. Hmm? Haven't you noticed that when you find sometimes you're just going beyond all situations and just decide, okay, let me just have faith in drama. Let me trust the drama. A, a patience starts to come inside. And with that patience comes a confidence. And that confidence, that patience opens windows. Fear never opens windows. Feeling regret does not open windows. In fact, it closes them very tightly. Because once, if I start to have fear or regret, if that becomes a habit or worry, if these things become a habit, then um, I, you know, I cut my connection. In a very subtle way, I still may believe in Baba, but the connection is not there. You know, Baba, I think you remember the Muli, he talked about intellect, three types of intellect, far-sighted intellect, remember, it was a recent Muli, broad, unlimited intellect and narrow intellect. So the far-sighted intellect goes into eternity. It goes beyond the physical. Hmm? And this is a very important element of aviat consciousness, 
to go beyond the conditioning of the physical and of sound, anything physical. The far-sighted intellect, Baba has said, remembers the one. But it's not, remembrance is not a passive state. With remembrance, that is my thought and my heart feelings go to the one, then there is a response. Where there's a response, there's nourishment. That is, where there's the experience, there's nourishment. And so a far-sighted intellect goes beyond all the details of the, the drama and is able to connect with the director and automatically gets perspective on everything. And a broad intellect, a broad unlimited intellect understands time. Baba said the beginning, the middle, and the end of time. Understands it. When I understand it, I can work within it. And no, the most important thing really in successful effort is timing. Knowing when to do something. And of course knowing how to do it as well. When to do, how to do timing. And so Baba says, confluence age is the time. It's the time of God, it's the time of you children, it's the time to re-experience this original relationship with Baba, but also to reveal this relationship to the other souls of the world, because they belong to our human family. They are all my brothers and sisters. And so when that relationship is revealed, they also get an opportunity to experience their original relationship with the original being, with the being of original love, of original purity. And then the narrow intellect. Remember the, the definition of a narrow intellect? <laughs> Baba said, narrow intellect, they praise God they talk about God, but they don't know him. <laughs> Praise and talk, but don't really know. Because where there's knowing, where there's understanding, then there is a change. There is a transformation in behavior. Because there starts to be an experience of a relationship that is not human. By the end of the cycle, the, the soul needs to really jump in its consciousness and start to understand relationships in another way that it's been used to, which is usually based on the vices, you know, it's taking and having and owning. And these are all the things that have given me sorrow. So, as the soul transforms on the basis of love and commitment, then um, it, it automatically will transform. Do I have to work so hard at transformation? The more I offer myself, offer myself to Baba, offer myself to myself, <laughs> offer myself in service, a lot of things start to transform. Otherwise, otherwise, I am caught in, in a wheel or a hole, a little hole of self-effort. And one of the very beautiful experiences of letting go and surrendering and trusting and becoming uh, patient is the feeling really of the aviet. Hmm? The aviat is not the feeling I do. Everything is being done. I do, I know, I have, I this, I that. It just melts away. And though the lips may be moving and the hands may be moving, there's not this feeling I am the doer. Because there's not desire attached to an action. 
especially in service. There's a, kind, there's a, a, a freedom and that can only happen when the soul starts to be more and more complete within itself. See, independence, freedom, completeness, purity, genuine, true, all these words show this state. Hmm? I don't need to take from anything. So, though I may be involved in action, I don't feel that I am doing. And then it's very easy to experience Baba as Karvan Karavanha, the one who moves and the one who makes me move. Then where is my happiness? Where is my value? Because for many people, the sense of value, the sense of identity, happiness comes from a result. Just look at Baba. You think of Baba, you know, he's many, many years teaching. Doesn't get big results always, <laughs> does he? <laughs> but he has what? He has supreme patience. <laughs> has supreme patience because he has a lot of love and he works with the drama. He works with the actors, not above them. And so he can be patient and in that patience, what's one special thing that you give when you have patience, when you have trust? Very, very good wishes, very deep wishes for souls. You're not rushing or pushing anybody. Of course, Baba does say, it's time now, move a little faster, but still, he doesn't get stressed. God doesn't get stressed, <laughs> no matter what he sees, because he, he, he works with the drama and that creates the trust that everything will be okay. It's simply a matter of time, it's simply a matter of certain clicks, signals, certain things happening in the drama. But the characteristic of Baba is, he's always there, he loves. Original love is always a very accepting being. See, and he doesn't, Baba doesn't have to make effort to be accepting. Do we have to make effort to be accepting? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> he doesn't have to make effort to be accepting. See, what is natural, gradually there's no effort to be made. So, if deep, deep, deep down, I'm starting to find this sense of completeness, of wholeness, of deep soul consciousness. A lot of things simply do not bother me. They just will not bother. And instead of being critical, they're simply mercy. So one of the things of the Aviat stage is mercy. What do, do angels criticize? I haven't known one yet <laughs> who does that. You know, where angels appear, everybody feels hope and compassion. They feel the, that compassion. They feel that hope. Light. Huh? Just this image of light gives everything. People will feel that God is present when there's that aviat light. And today, in the uh, blessing, it was all about Silence and light. How do angels speak? How do you speak through the Aviat stage? Silence. And through that silence, definitely there's light and vibration. Now when Bab Dada you know, did come, <laughs> didn't come this time, but when he comes, no speaking, just a very, very deep silence and a very, very deep and powerful vibration. You know, I had remember one student was, uh, she was telling me, you know, I want to go in October. I really want to go in October. I said, why so much? It was very difficult with her, for her with her work. Because I want to go in front of Baba. Hmm? You know, we usually on October take Drishti from Baba. 
I said, really? Just once a year you go in front of Baba? I thought you'd go in front of Baba every day. <laughs> Don't you take Drishti and go in front of him every day, every morning? I understood what she meant and of course it's understandable thing but again you see if we're in, a, in an unconscious way we can just be limited to the physical it can be limited to the physical it goes far beyond and even when Baba's here not everybody comes on to the physical stage and Baba has often told us you can meet me anytime Anywhere, just have the subtle connection. Baba is always calling you, it's the call of love to the subtle regions because that's the place of deep companionship. It's the place where the service hands come together with Bhaptada, God and the one who became the first angel. So when we go there, it really is the, the team of angels and Baba said remember once he was saying you know that when a, when a father knows that a child is going to be born he builds an extension to the house and Baba, Shiv Baba said yeah I knew you were all going to be born so I created the subtle regions the space was all, always there but the actual subtle region which runs on the energy of pure thought um, created it so you can come here because you know it's a little easier to go to the soul world just to be silent and still recharge but the subtle region requires by the by, its, by the name to be subtle <laughs> so the mind and the thoughts if they're stuck in the past if they're stuck in a person if they're stuck in a weakness of the self it, it, it can't seem to move doesn't move very well. Yeah. Okay. okay. What? Ah, yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks. So, but of course, all of this for us is experimentation and to remember to do it. And sometimes we go into things that it could be a little easier, you know, to give a workshop is easier. Than actually than to become subtle sometimes. But once in that subtle consciousness, then the service that can be done as Baba's instrument goes, you know, spreads very far because souls will feel. They will feel Baba's presence. They may even see light. Miracles happen through the subtle energy, but it requires um, to give attention to it. And sometimes the things happen in drama just to show us, okay, now, you know, practice the aviat. And, and there's no limitation there. He says, Baba has often told us there's no limitations in the subtle world. Come as often as you like. Get subtle totally as much as you like. <laughs> but the main thing is to feel that experience of companionship and instrument. And there the, and there's, is the feeling, not only I the soul, the angel of the confluence am there, with Bob Dada, but also many others are there also as well. And, and together they are doing that work. And if, again, if I'm too physical, then I will not be able to, to do that. Hmm? I mean, of course, it's a little bit of an acrobatic uh, act to be here in the physical body in the world of time and sound and at the same time have my consciousness there. But if I make the effort, Baba pulls the soul there. I am there and I am here. 
and the intellect is very clear and very sensible. <laughs> it's not either or because sometimes we have been brought up in bhakti either or. It's either spiritual or it's either lokic. Eh? It's either matter or it's either spirit. Whereas Baba says, you know, put these things together now. Because also the basis of the golden age, you know, I'm a spiritual being within the body. It's not I'm a spiritual being without it. The deity, Chivan Mukti, the deity is the human soul that uh, is totally liberated in life, has very good relationship with matter and with nature. And speaking of nature, this is, um, this is also, it's the call of love from God, but it's also the call of cooperation from nature, from the elements, the call of love and cooperation from the human family. And how do I respond? Hmm? No. Every day it's an enjoyment to check and move, eh? check and move. Because the more I check and I transform, then the capacity for generosity increases. No, I don't just check and change for myself. I check, I change. It's also, of course, for myself. It increases my self-esteem but also it increases the capacity for generosity. There's a word that is used in Hindi, Mahadani, the great bestower, the great giver. And the great giver, the great bestower is giving virtues, knowledge and power. Not just knowledge. Virtue, virtues through the actions, not virtues as knowledge, but virtues as clear positive energies in behavior. And all the different powers, the power of sweetness, the power of cooperation, all different types of powers. But how to create this aviat stage and keep it, keep it constant is I need to check my thoughts where they are going. Yeah. Moving in and up. Very often there has to be this subtle movement. And then outward. And Om Shanti helps a lot in keeping the self clear. Deep, very deeply in the self. Shanti, very deeply to the core of my being. I touch that point of original harmony, of original balance, peace. That keeps the soul very clear. And even if negative thought comes, even if obstacles, whether from inside or outside, come, I'm very clear within myself and Nothing doesn't penetrate. They come and dissolve or they come and they go. But again, it's an attention to go very deep into this, you know, the Om Shanti consciousness. You know, I did, th I did this lesson 35 years ago and still practicing. <laughs> and I'm sure I'll continue to. <laughs> because again, you know, it's very subtle and you, what can happen with knowledge, it can become routine. It can become superficial. And when something that is very valuable becomes routine or superficial, um, it doesn't give the nourishment that it should be giving. There's no depth and so there's no nourishment. And so souls may say Om Shanti or think Om Shanti, but 
the thing is, can I keep very still? Can I keep very quiet and really allow myself to be absorbed in that original peace? I find I have to do that exercise often. It's not a burden. <laughs> it's not a burden to do that exercise often, actually. It's quite a pleasure because if I do it properly, there's always that experience. If I don't do it properly, you see, it's not that we don't do it, it's sort of a quarter done or half done. And so the result is a quarter, the result is half. And surrender, surrender is that I give my best because I'm in love. Isn't it like that? When you're in love with something or someone, don't you give your best? <laughs> so to be in love with God is the best, you know, it's a very, um, very, very uh, <laughs> powerful relationship. And it's the only time we can really do it. In bhakti, it's a bit imagination and abstract and mixtures. But now, the soul can really get directly into this relationship. And if it does that, there's a great deal of benefit for other souls, for nature and for the elements. So it's not so hard to transform, is it? Is it? Is transformation difficult? <laughs> Depends which angle you start off. You know, some, some people come into the, tr the idea of transformation like boxers or wrestlers. And they have that type of experience. You know, people say, you know, I'm going to fight ego. I said, good luck. <laughs> I wouldn't want to fight ego. <laughs> I'd like to understand it and with the connection both to my original self and to Baba dissolve it hmm? because what usually happens what you fight grows what you suppress grows so even with the with those vices inside me that rob me of my right to happiness, even though, you know, I have to be able to approach them in a very wise way. I have to be able to, you know, when the, those experts have these bombs that they have to, what do you call it? Not detonate, they have to dismantle it, they have to make sure it doesn't blow up, but they have to go in and know what to do. So, the same, I just have to know the few key things so I can dismantle Maya, I can dismantle my ego, I can dismantle attachment. And But usually the way to do that is go to the opposite. The attachment, I go down, very deep down into my original respectfulness, my original love. And if I can't always do that on my own, of course, that's Baba can remind me. I can remember the one who is always original and he will give that power. And this, you know, how did Brahma Baba become the angel? How did he do it? He was a human soul. He must have gone through something. He must have done things. But one of the things you feel always when you hear especially Aviat Mulis is that yes, he did it with all of his heart. And the daddies also is what you feel. They gave all of themselves to the father and to service. The father and service. And to what I have found also very useful is to make attention to put silence into my day. You know, during the day, not only in the morning or only in the evenings, but windows of silence during the day. We'll talk a little bit about this later. Um, 
Sometimes people ask also how to sustain these, how to sustain spiritual progress, how to enjoy the spiritual life so that it doesn't become just one big constant battle, how to have more natural remembrance. Well, there are probably many different things we could do, but uh, there are three main, three things. I won't say they're main because there may be other things as well. But it is certainly it's reflection, concentration, and bestower, donation. These three things help us very much. Reflection. Reflection is linked to newness. Newness in understanding. But again, I have to give time to this. You know, like 15 minutes in the afternoon or 20 minutes, something. Because if there's not reflection, then I always have the same set of understanding, the same set of ideas, and after a while, they do not uh, inspire me in yoga. They do not create new feelings or new experiences in yoga. So when the intellect gets lazy, when the intellect gets comfortable, then this creative ability of, the, of reflection, this creative capacity starts to fossilize. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not used. And the big thing that stops creativity in knowledge is, I know. I know, yeah, I know. I know I'm a soul. I know who Baba is. I know the drama. We, we don't know enough of anything, actually. We know some things. But someone who is more creative, and they're, and they're creative because they want to understand better. It's like now, we did f about the far-sighted intellect, broad intellect, narrow intellect. If, again, one can actually reflect on that much more deeply. Whenever Baba talks about himself, he says, you know, I don't take birth in the same way. Okay, we've heard this point before and it's a fact we know from the first weeks of Brahmin life. But if I go into it, you know, so therefore, how is, you know, it's different and so what's, what does that mean? Questions to the self, what does that mean more deeply? It's like the word Srimat. People can understand it very superficially. But I, I think one of the things that helps creative reflection is dharma. That is when it has to be applied. When I apply it personally and I want new applications, then it stimulates my reflection. You know these iPads now have all these apps, don't they? I think apps means application. I'm not expert on this, but I think that's what it means. And you know, they have 40, 50, so many different types of applications. And, and so the same, if there's to be a variety of experiences, I mustn't, you know, become lazy in my, with my intellect. I must actually always be creative. You see this in Daddy Janky, she's very creative always in knowledge and therefore experiences. This helps me to keep aviat. This helps me to keep above. Huh? Become an observer more. Observer is the server. Yeah? One who observes can serve because they don't get entangled in the unnecessary or the wasteful. And sometimes even when I have an attack of Maya, it doesn't happen too much, does it? No? <laughs> I should try to, sometimes it's useful to understand how it came. Not to go on and on and on about it, but 
okay, how did it come? What was the blind spot that made me do this again and, and again and maybe again? So, how to begin this process of creative reflection? Quietness, to be quiet, to be still, and then start to pick up something that I really want to understand more and, and gently turn it in my intellect. And silence, it's not, we don't churn in a logic way, we don't reflect in a logic way, it's more spiritual, more silence in it, more pause, a pause, we can pause. It's not a matter of finding facts, it's not a matter of finding any type of, you know, solution, just there's another word besides reflection and it's connected to it, it's contemplation. To contemplate an idea, a new idea. What does that mean? You hold it without, you know, analyzing it or, you know, <laughs> trying to squeeze things out. You hold it and let the self be absorbed in it. This contemplation of a pure thought, of a pure idea, also stimulates new experience. And this will keep me more of yet. And then the second one, concentration. Concentration actually creates empowerment because in concentration I'm connected the lines are connected with Baba, with my original self, and in this connection, an energy flows. And the more deeply I can go into concentration, the lighter I become. See, of course, if I concentrate on negative things, which is not that difficult, yeah, because it's possible to concentrate on negative things. I just go down, 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 down. If I'm concentrating on spiritual things, you know, Baba, the soul, a virtue, whatever, it makes me lighter and stronger. You know, the stronger a person is, a stronger a soul is, the lighter they are because they're well connected. An angel, an angel is light. Aviet, angel, light. Nothing pulls them down. And because their heart is concentrated on the truth. That truth is God, Baba. That truth is also their original self. So concentration on that truth creates that power of lightness. and also filling. Huh? When I'm concentrated, I go deep and I fill the self, huh? start to fill the self. For example, I'm concentrated on Baba Sanskar, can Baba Sanskar, or Baba's role, whatever it is, that starts to be absorbed in the self. Whatever I concentrate on creates an absorption in the self. I concentrate on the past, I concentrate on weaknesses, I concentrate on anything like that, and it starts to be absorbed in the self. Where there's creative reflection, then there starts to be the right type of concentration. And where there's the concentration, the fullness of experience, then the next step is bestowing, sharing it sharing peace, genuine peace, sharing love, original love, sharing silence, silence filled with uh, pure feelings, good wishes. Because the the task of the Confluence Age is to share. Baba is always encouraging us to get to a stage of purity 
because the more the purity, the more quality sharing there is. Baba said, people, you should be able to reveal the Father through your face. Now, if my face looks like it walked into a wall in the morning, not much revelation will happen. <laughs> Although I can talk about God, I can talk about soul, but my face looks a bit strange. So, the revelation comes again from the subtle, the subtle feeling, the subtle consciousness, the subtle where I'm really at. And then that influences the physical that shines from my face or it shines from my eyes. And so the bestower, as an instrument of the Father, um, f really receive their happiness when they see souls, nature, elements returning to their original state of peace and balance. They're, well, they're getting some experience of this. Harmonizes. A real bestower is a harmonizer. Bob often says, you are masters. A master, characteristic of a master is a harmonizer. And so every day, it's a daily um, journey, <laughs> reflecting, concentrating, bestowing, with a lot of ease. Because hmm? people always ask, how can you, you know, make these things quicker? easier. Just attention. Attention and commitment. Because the habit is to be distracted, especially by people. Hmm? You distracted by anyone? Anyone? Does anyone distract us? Because what, what distracts me, my energy will go there. Of course, there will be people, there will be situations, there will be problems all the time. But to be deeply in myself and become the observer saves a lot of energy. I know we have heard this word a lot, observer, observer. But it's one thing hearing it, it's one thing practicing it. It's another thing. This is what I said about routine. If I'm not practicing all these very beautiful words and concepts do become a routine. And then in routine there's no power, no genuine spiritual power. And this is why the world is like it is now. Everybody uses the right words, even in Lokik. They will say love, they will say equality, they will say peace, but they will say trust. But it's not there. And this is why there's a disintegration now. So Baba as always says, remember in the early morning, remember me, remember the self and uh, start every day from there. And what makes the difference between souls is just the, the level of attention. I was thinking it's the level of attention but it's the, it's also the humility for self-observation. Because you know, I need humility to observe myself. I don't need humility to observe others. Eh? <laughs> Actually, if my ego is quite big, I will observe others. That's, that's where critical vision comes from. Very difficult actually to really go into the self and elevate the attitude. Elevate the attitude to deal with negative situations or negative people. But to deal with it in a transformative way, both for myself and the situation. The alternative is to block by continuous criticism or feeling of injustice or suppression. This actually just blocks any type of... Uh, 
liber free, freedom, liberating myself, but because my, I have to go in to elevate my attitude. I have to go in to elevate my consciousness. I have to connect to elevate my vision. Hmm? And it's so easy not to. It's so easy not to do it. So, Aviet, you know, Aviet is very beautiful and very practical and, you know, this was just sharing some of the steps that can help us to get to that Aviet. And like in any school, like in any clinic, like in any garden, because that's where we all are, it always requires a care. Care and discerning wisdom of how to deal with something. Not a general wisdom, but a discerning intellect that can deal accurately with this. You know, an insect in the, on the flower, or a sickness that has burst out again in the patient, or a block in learning for a student. It's the discerning. And our, you know what Daddy Gulzar said you, about what B Baba had actually mentioned many times. It says, "From your heart, you call Baba, and he is there." So maybe I can't I, I can't get rid of this insect. <laughs> maybe you know the block is beyond me. Call the Father with all my heart. And then he will give, he will give, he may not give the, the direct answer at that moment, what, but what he often gives is the peace and the calm to be able to open the intellect and to be able to find methods. So the call of love, that's the speciality of the confluence. And you know, Lockheed people talk about rights, but Baba says, you have your rights also. He says, you have the right to pure love, to original love, the right to original peace. Use it, use them. Never lose rights. I lose rights you know, when I start to use old methods or old habits like fear, mistrust, ego, irritation, hmm? All these, I start to lose then. People often think they're winning, you know, if they're loud enough and forceful enough and get their way, they think they win. But Baba says, this is not the Aviat way. <laughs> this is not the deity way. <laughs> transform the methods when I transform my consciousness. And it's very clear what um, Bob Dada are making the soul and that the kingdom of the golden time, the kingdom of the, the truth is actually a reality and it is being established. Okay, Om Shanti. And we'll finish with a few moments of silence. So just to sit very quietly relaxed very relaxed and very gently concentrating on the center of my forehead and creating a thought I the soul I the child, I am with you, my beloved father and mother. I am with you in the world of subtle light. the angelic world and here you are there 
here in this world of silent light, I begin to see my form of light. I am beyond this physical body. Here, in this world of light, I see my form of light, my subtle form of service. Baba, I come here to you. I absorb your sakash. I remember. I remember my eternal part with you. At the end of every play, you show me how to play this part. This part of angelic light, of true service. Baba, let me remain here with you in this world of unlimited light world of unlimited love, the place of unlimited service, love and service, service.